So thanks for having me. Um, I really enjoy coming to this conference to speak. Uh, I'm used to going to these developer conferences, and as you scan the audience, you will see men. And that's it. So uh, the developer community is not very diverse, and I'm very happy to see such a gender equal conference. And I'm happy to speak at it. Let me see. Thing got so, like, the, f the last time I was at a developer conference, there was one company who had, um, I don't know if you've heard of boot ladies. It's like when you go to Formula One or uh, like a motorcycle contest, they will have these ladies that are, uh, aren't dressed. And uh, it's gotten that worse. Uh, and it's something that we need to talk about. And I'm happy to be here. And I also, I urge you to start coding because uh, that's, that's what I do. And we need more coders and we need more women as well. Uh, let me see. I just want to quickly switch to canalfemplate.se because that's what I work with daily. And so you get a feel for what I do. Let's see if I can find a window here. Let's zoom out a bit, if that's possible. No. Um, so this is the website, uh, or actually the, the service that I'm working with. Um, it is a new way of, or it's an ambitious way of trying to bring the TV to the web. Um, most web TV websites nowadays, you go in, you have to know exactly what you want to watch. And if you don't find that, you go there, you leave that place. Uh, what we're trying to do is, and some people would call that auto starting, but what we're trying to do is we basically know a lot about our viewers and we know what they want to watch. Uh, as we see in this case, a lot of people, maybe some of you even saw breaking news last night. That was a show that was aired on Canal Fem. And it's, uh, it's available as a catch-up version on our site. Um, and we know that basically 80% of all our viewers will want to watch that show, so why not start it? That's how you do when you turn on your telly and you start, start using the remote. You will start seeing stuff immediately. Imagine having to confirm every time. You go to TV Fira, confirm that you want to watch Robinson, or confirm that you want to watch Let's Dance, or I don't know. So that's, uh, that's the site I'm working with. So we also have an iPhone app and an Android app. Uh, let's see if I can switch back to this. I have to. And, to, and this is kind of the story about how we moved to the cloud. And to illustrate that story, uh, I want to continue and introduce a problem known as the tea kettle problem. Uh, it's a problem that was first presented to me at some cloud conference a couple of years ago. And it's actually, I don't really remember who, who presented it. And I'll explain to you later. It's kind of good that I don't remember this, because it's a bad example and it's actually not. I shouldn't be talking about it. but. It kind of uh, shows what I want to say here today. And so I'll continue. Uh, some of you may recognize this slide. Uh, it's a soap opera shown on BBC. Anyone from England here? No, one, one or two, yeah. So EastEnders is a soap opera that's been running since 19, uh, 1985. And according to Wikipedia, which is kind of the, the cloud version of the, the big case of books that you have in your, at home, uh, the launch show attracted 17 million viewers. And one of the episodes, the Christmas Day episode in 1986, attracted a combined 30.15 million. Now, 
Canal Femme is not that big of a channel. We, I think our record is somewhere around one million people. Uh, but, so and I want you to picture all these 30 million uh, British people watching EastEnders, and then picture them, what they do after that. So, I don't know about you, but my, uh, my thing with British people is that they usually drink tea. So 30 million or 20 million or so, we want to drink tea just after EastEnders ended on TV. So they turn on their tea kettles, and to boil all that water, we're going to need a lot of energy. So what happened during, or actually after EastEnders, the power companies were at, on their toes, trying to produce as much energy as possible so that all these tea kettles would be boiled, or all these water would be boiled for the tea kettles. And as you, might, as you may know, uh, energy can't be stored. So it has to be con constructed, or you have to produce it while, uh, once it's needed. So, uh, and this is kind of the scenario that, at least according to the presenter at that conference, this is what happens. So the energy consumption will, will uh, skyrocket just after EastEnders. Now what does that have to do with us? So the next slide, I'll just change some of the, you might have not, not have noticed that, I'll just change some of the uh, titles and texts. So this is exactly what happens at our site. We have the, we're experiencing the tea kettle problem every day, every single day, or almost every day. Fridays and s Saturdays we show America's Funniest Home Videos and no one's really watching. Um, but so, the, uh, the big spike here, I wrote Arya Snickan ends on TV. Arya Snickan is a rather popular show that we air on Canal Femme and it's viewed, uh, I think it has about half a million viewers. And usually what happens with Arya Snickan is that there's a follow-up episode, and there's a voice, Peter, which is actually really small, and he sounds like this big guy. Uh, he urges people to go to the website to check out what really happened. Did they, they were they able to live in the house? Uh, what happens to the bathroom and so on? Um, so, we will almost, I think the worst thing, usually our baseline traffic, and when I say traffic here, it's kind of technical, it's the number of hits that our servers are facing. So, one, uh, if someone goes into the start page, that would probably generate about 20 hits. Uh, so, it's not really, one hit is not one person. Uh, but the worst scenario we've had is about, 10,000 hits per second. And to be able to cope with all that traffic, we needed, to, um, we needed to find a way to dimension the number of servers that we had. So at that point in time, this was in 2009, we, uh, we had about eight servers. That was it. It was quite expensive. We had to renew them every uh, one and a half, two years, and we had to store them somewhere. We had to cool them. So we, we bought place at this uh, like, uh, company that has all the cooling and stuff. But eight servers in total, and we were only able to deal with about, let's say, 1,000 requests per second. So we, we really didn't know how to deal with this. And you might not think that that's too bad, because we're, we're basically dealing with all the traffic that, that's underneath our baseline. So 99% of the time, it, everything goes smoothly. But then, at this one point, when everybody wants to enter the site, no one can get in. That's the scenario, and that's really problematic. So we tried to uh, think of ways to solve this, and we added three more servers, and we really worked hard uh, to optimize those servers, to be able to get as much out of these 11 servers as possible. But still, we never really got to the, to the peak. Um, now, a better scenario would be something that worked like this. So we would have something that dynamically adapted to the traffic we were having. Um, and so it could run 
while we're at baseline traffic, it could run three servers, and then on peak traffic, we could run 30 servers. And um, yeah, I'll get back to that just soon. I just want to end the whole tea kettle problem and say that it's completely, completely bad. Uh, so my cousin is uh, chief inspector at the National Electrical Safety Board. Yeah, uh, and uh, I had a discussion with him about this problem on Facebook, uh, which is the cloud version of telephone. Uh, and uh, Basically, what he said was this: um, There's the, it, the all these tea kettles. They won't even notice because uh, usually, when people turn on their tea kettle, the heating goes down, so uh, that evens out it. And usually, when people stop watching TV, they turn off their TV, and that uh, consumes less energy as well. So. It's, uh, it's a good example for us, and it's true for us. It's not true in the energy-consuming cons world. Um, now, back to the traffic scenario. To be able to deal with all the traffic, we turn to Google App Engine. Um, and Anton already introduced the service briefly. And basically, that's, that's what it does. It adapts to the amount of traffic that you have, and it will scale automatically up and down. Um, and apart from that, it has a number of other features as well that's, that come in really handy for us. Um, but that's basically the, the idea of the whole service and the reason why we went there, to be able to focus on what we want to do, which is uh, code, uh, develop new services, and try to drive kind of fam forward into the future instead of having to deal with all these servers, because that was taking a long time. And let's see. Um, what I want to do next is something that usually they don't really, uh, it's, it's, a bad <laughs> it's a bad idea. Uh, I want to show you some of the features of App Engine. Um, apart from being able to scale up and down automatically, it also allows us to deploy new versions really fast. So what I'm going to do here is I've talked to the developers back home, Mick and Anders, and they prepared the version for us. So I'm going to switch to that new version. And I don't really know what they've done with that version, but it's a new version. and I'm going to switch to that version and show you first how many viewers are on our site, and then switch to that version and show that they're still there. So this is a live scenario. See, I just have to prepare some. Um, let's do that. Oh, then I don't see it here. Never mind. So this is the site. and. This is the, the, like the admin console of Google App Engine. So this is, like, this is our account. This is where we control everything. You'll even, you'll even see the, the tea kettle problem here. It wasn't that bad yesterday. Uh, yesterday was a live uh, event broadcasted on TV and on the web, and that usually it, it generates a lot of traffic, but it doesn't produce these spikes. So this is, even though it's a spike, you see, minus 18 hours, it's not that bad. We, we would be able to deal with that even with our own servers. So let's, uh, I'll open, where am I? So just to, there will be, apart from how many uh, viewers are on the site at the moment, there will be other numbers as well uh, that will be interesting, but don't look at them. I promise not to show them. So, oops. Ah, purple word.
Oops. Let me get that window for a while. I need to see what happened. All right. All right, we're back. Um, we scroll down for a bit, and then we'll see the dashboard. So this is the number I didn't want to show. Huh? They apparently, oh, that's bad. Uh, so 4,536 people are on the site now, and probably watching breaking news or something else. And so we'll switch back to the App Engine Admin Console. And I'll just click the versions option here. And then I can see all the versions that we have on, of our site. And basically, we deploy new versions two or three times a week. So even though you won't notice anything, we deploy constantly. And we were able to get new functionality out to, to you viewers in less than 10 minutes. And that's really one of the like, key features of App Engine. So let's, uh, I see they prepared a, a version for me here. So what I'll do is I'll just fire this version up. And there's a special URL that you can try the new version before it's actually running. Uh, and hopefully, we'll see a website here. Yeah, we do. And um, so we know that it's, it's up. Um, let's just pause that. Uh, let's click this as well. And when I'm done here, I'll just uh, select this new version. And then this is the big uh, red button that I'm not supposed to press. But so I'll do it. And uh, if all goes well here, we should see a new version of the site. There was actually, oops, sorry, there was actually three changes. So could we keep track of all the changes between versions? And the last version was 3518. That's a, a huge number, but and then the new version is 3521. So they made three changes, but I don't really know what they made. They told me that it's all right, and we should be, we should be okay. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll switch to the live version of the site. And there it is. It's the new version. So that's it. Thank you. Um, I think we have time for some questions, if there are any. Let's bring Anton here as well. One of the questions I get a lot is that if so, imagine you as a company have your own site that's not running in the cloud, and then people ask, why can we just switch to Google App Engine? Or can we switch to something else? And it's kind of a hard question because question, usually you have to adapt your site or your app to conform to certain things that the cloud really needs. So one of the things that you can't do on Google App Engine is write things to files. So for example, I've been looking at some WordPress themes, because my wife is working with WordPress. And some of the themes that she uses are using a lot of um, file. It writes a lot and reads from file. And Google App Engine does nothing of that. It has cloud versions of file storage, but it doesn't really use the file system at all. Uh, I would say for those kind of circumstances, uh, you could look at other services like uh, Amazon or yeah, Anton maybe knows that better. 
Any more questions or should we, or should we end and you can come back here to talk with us one to one instead? Well, uh, there will be another 10 minutes for uh, any more intimate discussions. You're welcome up here to uh, grab a cup of coffee or a glass of water and talk with Anton and Henrik. So, but otherwise, thank you very much. Thank you.